thanks again for coming out and uh, on to, uh, to week five of the season here. Just wrapping up Murray, uh, it was a good win. And the thing I was most pleased about is uh, our preparation last week was really good. And I thought we carried that to the game. Uh, you know, I thought it was a game that we should win and we had some, some matchup advantages. Uh, but again, I was happy with the performance. We were efficient on offense and defense. We limited big plays. Um, you know, and the great thing too is a game like that, to be able to get so many players in uh, that usually don't get a chance to play. And, and I think that really helps with the, the morale of the locker room and it helps with the future of our program. So it was uh, great to see guys get some uh, game time there and have so many different guys score touchdowns. I thought we spread the ball around on offense really well. And again, on, on defense, got a little bit of a pass rush going and uh, did some good things. So now we're uh, moving on to Akron, um, you know, back in the, the MAC East. Every one of these games is a championship game. Uh, you know, you never know at the end of the year which one, um, and it could be you lose one and, and you put yourself out of it. I, I think Akron is an improving program. Uh, that's not just coach speak because they're the next opponent. If you watch them on film, um, they have had skill. They had skill last year. You know, their secondary has been good. Their linebackers, uh, good quarterback, two years in a row. Very talented receivers. Uh, Chisholm, I think, is. is gifted as any tailback in the league. Uh, but last year, they, they were close in a lot of games. But I thought late in games last year, they you know, they, they would wear down a little bit up front. And, and they are so improved up front on both sides of the football. Um, I think their biggest improvement is in their defensive front. Um, you know, They have a lot of guys back. And then they added three transfers to the mix. So they had three players that, uh, or, or two players that sat out a year ago that were from Colorado State. And, and those are their two starting ends now. So uh, Cappy and James and those guys are, are very good players. So they went from playing a 200 pound or 220 pound defensive end to now having bookends that are both 250 pounds. And, and these guys are, are very good players. And then they uh, added a, another depth inside. They, they got a 320 pound tackle from Florida State. So you add those three guys into the mix with what they had coming back. And the, the way their entire defensive front looks and plays now is completely different. And then they did the same thing on offense. Again, last year they could throw the ball. This year their quarterback's really good. They've got talented receivers. I've talked about the tailback. But they had a, a handful of returning starters on the O-line. And now they've added a Wisconsin transfer, a Pitt transfer, and a Florida State transfer to their O-line. So now they suddenly got bigger, stronger. And, and these are older kids for them. Talking about seniors and juniors, guys that have played football. So, uh, you know, th this is not going to be uh, th this is going to be a challenging game for our guys. You have a team that's, I think, playing well. Uh, you know, people can say Akron. The record is one and three, and it's an undefeated Central Florida. Uh, they had a chance to beat Michigan the last play of the game, and certainly people in football know that Louisiana Lafayette is a very good program. Two years in a row, that's a team that has won nine games, and. Um, one, two bowls. So th these guys are, are close, and um, we're going to have to play very well this week. So it uh, should be a great game. We're glad we're at home. Hopefully, we get another good crowd, and uh, I'll take any questions you have. When you look at a, a one and three team, does the Michigan game alone help get your players' attention when you watch that game film and what they did against Michigan? Does that help get their attention, you think? Well, here, here's what I told our football team is. Uh, if you look at Bowling Green one year ago, after four games, we were one and three. But I think everybody in our locker room felt that we had a good football team, but we had played some good teams. You know, we lost to three teams that were all bowl teams, including Florida, which you know was in a BCS bowl. And so, you know, after the Florida game, that gave us confidence, knowing that we could play with anybody. At the very least, the Michigan game gave Akron that confidence. They lined up and went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They were very disruptive on defense. They created turnovers. Uh, they won blocks up front. I mean, a lot of times, you know, maybe a guy will trip where you say it's, it's fluky. It, it was not fluky the way that they defended Michigan. I mean, they were winning battles up front. They were generating the pass rush. Uh, they were getting off blocks in the run game. They had DBs that made great breaks on throws and, and pick throws. So, um, yeah. I mean, how does that game not get your attention? But to follow it up and, and to play
play the way they did against Lafayette. And Lafayette's a, a really good program. That's a nine-win team that won a bowl game two years in a row. So they, they are neck and neck with really good teams. So again, I think this is going to be a, uh, a very challenging game for our team, and we're going to find out a lot about us. Do you think it's easy to underestimate Akron because they've only won four games the past year? Does it sound like I'm underestimating them? I mean, a year ago, they were beating us 10 nothing at the half, and we were very fortunate to win that game. So it's not like we went in Akron last year and, and, and blew their socks off. But if you look at Akron a year ago, they were in games. I mean, it, it, you know, they finished uh, with one win, but you know, they had they were beating us, they were beating Toledo, they were beating good football teams early in games. And again, they've addressed those personnel issues with some of the transfers they brought in. Do you think teams underestimate going into it? That's why the team that's there ahead a lot. Our guys don't because, again, they, they very easily could have beat us a year ago, and they're a much better team this year than they were a year ago. You know, their good players are back, and they've added quality. You know, where they weren't as strong, they now have quality players there through transfer. So it's not like guys graduated and now they're playing true freshmen and they're going through growing pains. I mean, they brought in ready-made guys. And again, you, just, you watch the film. Playing well, the quarterback. When you have a guy that can throw the ball like that, and receivers who can make plays the way their, their receivers do, I mean that's uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have to cover them, and we're gonna have to make plays on the ball. Is there any level of concern facing a team that's lost a bunch of road games? Um, what do you mean? Akron comes into the game having lost twenty eight straight road games. I didn't know that. We're getting our team ready for the team that we see on, on film. And the team we saw on film had the ball inside the five with a second left with a chance to beat an undefeated Michigan. So that, that's the team we have to get ready for. And, you know, 28 road losses, I mean, that, that has a lot to do with the team they had two years ago and three years ago, which has nothing to do with this team. So again, we, uh, you know, we respect them. Last year's game, our players remember it. Uh, that was certainly not an easy game. Um, and we see the film this year, they're better. And that, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna start winning. Um, and uh, and, they, and they've, they've got a plan and they've got players. And, and they're really improved. So, I mean, we went into the game last year knowing that they were light up front. And I think felt that, you know, if we, if we had to run it, there was something hopefully we could do. You, you can no longer say that because of, uh, of, of the improvements in the personnel they've made up front. It's been a, about a month to play four games. What are the one or two areas that you're really impressed with the improvement that you made? And then maybe one or two areas where you haven't made the improvement you would hope to make? Well, um, you know, first off, on, on offense, we, we, we're certainly improved how we're throwing the ball. Like we probably had two games this year that we, we threw it better than any time at, at last year. And so I, I think there's a lot more continuity, a lot more consistency in our passing game than we ever had a, a year ago. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, and overall, I, I think we've improved on our special teams. You know, last year was a little bit of a, a disappointment where we were special team wise. I think we're starting to get that edge back. I think our, our coverage units are better. I feel better about our return units. To me, those things are, uh, are areas that we are making the progress, I'd hope. If you say where are their concerns, uh, I don't know if we're generating enough of a four-man pass rush. Uh, we had a pretty good player a year ago that uh, we could get a four-man pass rush, we could get a three-man pass rush, we could have gotten a one-man pass rush. Um, you know, I, I just, we're not getting enough of a pass rush when teams drop back and, and throw the ball. We're not disrupting a lot of balls on defense. We still don't have an interception. Uh, you know, th those are certainly concerns that we have. And uh, you know, offensively, you know, probably the one concern I have is we just, we haven't made a lot of explosive plays for touchdowns. You know, I, I broke down all of our touchdowns the other day. And you know, I think it's good that we're having long drives. We're, we're second in the country right now in time of possession. That's the good news. You know, the bad news is that every now and then it'd be nice to have a 45-yard touchdown or 
a 30 yard touchdown and have a drive that you don't have to make two or three first downs. So again, that's, that's good news, bad news. It's good that we're able to sustain drives and we're converting third downs and we're doing a lot of those things well and our red zone percentage is way up. It's, uh, you know, I'd like to see us get more big plays for touchdowns. I, I don't know if there's a stat on this, but I would guess that we probably lead the country right now in one yard touchdowns. You know, I, I think we have five or six one yard touchdown runs, which is great that we're getting that yard. It's better than not getting that yard. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice to, to have a touchdown without getting in the red zone. On the special teams, uh, Last couple weeks, it seems Paul Sam has been there to do that. Did you know that as a junior college player, was he a special teams guy? You can put that microphone. On. <laughs> yeah, I can wait. Go ahead. We, we are. We're I don't think it's going to read. We're, we're a media friendly. We're a media friendly program here. Most media friendly in Northwest. We'll, we'll interrupt our press conference. <laughs> we'll put the microphone there, and we're just. Great. So we're so happy. Yeah. We're so happy you're here. I'm happy to be here. You know, the TVs would have done that if John Michael was asking here. questions. I'll, I will, I'll get this for you. He's okay. a Toledo guy. You realize that? if this was Lissette, he would have killed you right now. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I even gave you uh, material this week. <laughs> okay. Right? Which I appreciate. I acknowledged your marriage. I know you did. I appreciate that. So. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate you. Okay, Jack. I don't remember. I did, no, I, I remember your question. <laughs> okay. Um, did you notice that in junior college? Was he a special teams guy? No, but he was a good linebacker, and, and really with your special teams, you always count on those second and third level defensive players helping you. I'm really happy with Paul Sen. Um, we, needed one, we needed somebody to develop and become our third linebacker and help us on special teams, and, and he's done a really nice job. And everybody saw the block punt at Indiana, but he, he is really improving, and he's doing a nice job. And I mean, he's on our kick return team. He, he's He's doing a lot of nice things for us. So, uh, you know, sometimes your, your hit ratio on junior college players isn't high. He, he's been an absolute hit. I'm, I'm really glad we took him. And, and he's doing a nice job. And, you know, he's a good student. He's doing things right off the field. So that's, uh, that, that's a definite plus. Is your mic working? I'm good. All right. Good. Coach, you mentioned final possession. Is this something a stat where you're kind of getting kind of stat crazy if we look at it, or is there a real value to having a high time of possession? Or I, I think there's a value to it because I think the two things that it tells you is you're, you're getting off the field and you're staying on, and uh, that's a very simple way of looking at it. But when you when you win time of possession, okay, you're probably converting third downs, and the other team probably isn't. Now, some games, it's less meaningful. I mean, we won the time of possession at Indiana. Big deal. You, know, you let them score in one minute drives. Uh, or not let them score, but didn't execute on defense. So that, that can be a misleading stat. I think in last week's game, it was misleading. I mean, when you have a 99 and a 97 yard drive and you're converting a bunch of third downs, I mean, that, that's a good thing. That's, that's being efficient. Um, so, you know, that, that stat, I don't know how much that statistic correlates to winning. Um, but, you know, I, I think for us, it means you're getting off the field and you're converting third downs. And, and the games that you've played, I mean, that, you know, the Tulsa game, that was an important stat. I think last week it was important. You know, but it's only important if you're, you're getting third down stops, not if you're giving up fast touchdowns. You know, part of it, too, John, might be the nature of the offenses we faced. You know, when you, you play a fast-paced offense, I don't think they care about time of possession. And, and two of the four offenses we play are, are that way. To what level does your offense care about time of possession? Well, they care. You know, they, they care. I mean, that, that, was, that, that was a goal the Indiana week, and it was certainly a goal last week. You know, with, uh, you know, we were very concerned about Murray's passing game and the receiver power. I mean, we wanted to limit the opportunities he had to make plays. And, and we also thought that that was a game that if you're making first downs, even if you're not scoring, you're probably not giving the other team good field position. And, and really thought if we could just, every time we went out there, if we made two or three first downs and we could play the game on their side of the field, it would really help us. You know, so usually when you have the ball on the one yard line, your goal as an offense is to make at least two first downs. And if you have to punt it, put them in their territory. You know, so to go 99 and 97, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's dessert. 
that's the cherry on top. Um, you know, so I mean, those th those things are, are good that we can sustain that drive, and you know, and, and that those I think become more. I think last year that was more important to us because we had so many leads in the third and fourth quarter, and, and then you really want to play keep away. You good? No. Um, Come on, he's got at least three I, more. I, I, <laughs> Missing our one zinger today, though. No, no we'll, we'll give you that one afterwards. Okay. Uh, right, Jordan? Absolutely. Do you have a zinger for us? or? No, Mike didn't preload me with any questions for okay. you today. Sorry. If you could text him real quick. You want me to text him and see what he has for you? Yeah. Uh, with uh, Tyler struggled, Tyler Tate struggled at Indiana, and then first PAT off the crossbar, level of concern for that? He, he looked good today. I mean, he was so good in camp. I mean, you want your kicker to hit every kick. So every time you miss one, you're concerned. Um, yeah, I was a little bit worried after he missed the first extra point, and then the next six, he put right between the middle and didn't miss hit any of them. He's looked good in practice. You know, I mean, it, there's not one position you're gonna be perfect, um, but he's got a good leg. He's been accurate all camp. Uh, and, and again, he bounced back and hit the next six. Is that a position where, if, and I hate to say it this way, but I think you'll understand what I mean. If you look good, even if it doesn't work, I mean, the, the extra point, it wasn't a floater or a duck or your wounded duck or anything like that. I mean, it looked good, it just hit the crossbar. I mean, yeah, is that? I mean, it's pretty, the ball comes pretty true off his leg. He doesn't miss hit a lot. I mean, the problems we've had in the past here is, you know, we'd have the camera zeroed right at the spot hitting three inches behind, you know, you know kind of like my golf swing when I get to play. You know, I'm hitting behind it, in front of it. Tyler, when, when he misses it, you know, he maybe hooks it a little bit or pushes it a little bit, but it always has good height. And, you know, it always comes out end over end. You know, it, he's not hitting knuckle balls. You know, sometimes you can hit those knucklers and they find a way in and you know that your percentage on those is gonna be low. Um, you know, Biggest advice I give to kickers is I tell them to kick it between the two bars and over the other. <laughs> kind of, kind of stay away. I just those guys know they, they, they're able to coach themselves so much better. Um, you know those guys just they, they have their their own way of doing things. And, and Tyler's is really a student of kicking. I mean, and he, he is really good at knowing exactly what he did, and uh, and he's really matured and become uh, you know a very dependable guy for us. So again, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm, I'm not overly concerned about that. Sorry for an answer to this, but how nice is it to have this three-game stretch uh, at home? You know, stay in your own bed, blah, 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 the whole routine of not really having to worry about it. Yeah, he, here's what I really like our schedule is you know, most years you have six home games, some years five. But it just seems here that we've had so many home games in November, and I just think in terms of the crowd and you know, we had a great crowd the first game. Then last game, you know, our whole stands were filled. And I just think if you can win early and have home games, it gives you a chance to have momentum. I mean, nothing kills attendance in this league like a weeknight November game. And so I'm just glad that we're having home games in September and October. I mean, just the one year in, uh, I think it was 2010, you know, in September we were at Tulsa, uh, at Troy, at Michigan just seemed forever until you played a home game. And I think with every college football season, you know, there's a buzz about college football early and you want to capture it when you can. And um, so again, I, I'm glad we're home more early this year. And uh, you know, in November, I won't like all those trips, but can't have it both ways. Is it nice to not to, I mean, obviously you're having a good season so far, but you know, to get those wins out of the way to hit the bull mark early rather than, you know, worry about it later. <laughs> you, I'm, no, I'm not trying the question. No, I'm not trying to be, you know, that guy. But. We're, we're, we're trying to win this week, and, and I know that's coach speak, but that's the world we live in. If I go down to my our, our team room and start talking about, you know, hey, guys, if we get this one, we're two away from being bowl eligible, where do you think their mind's going? I mean, you just, you can't talk about that. You can't. Um, Focus has to be week to week. And the second you start thinking about that stuff, you take your eye off the ball, and then you don't play well, and then you won't end up in a bowl. So, you know, and in this league, getting six or getting seven isn't a guarantee. Getting eight's not a guarantee. 
you know, you've got you've, you've to beat teams in the conference, and if you do that, that whole thing takes care of itself. If you don't, you know, you can be bowl eligible and not be in a bowl. So, you know, we need to win our league football games. If we do that, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll end up in a good place. Yeah, not, it's, not that it's easy by any means, but I'm thinking more so from the side that you're at home. It's just nicer. It's, there's no question we like being at home. You know, I think it's, it's an advantage, there's a routine, there's a familiarity with it, <coughs> you know, but again, I think the thing as a football coach, you don't talk about that because you also gotta play six games on the road. So if you talk about how great it is to be at home and what an advantage that is, and we're not gonna concede that it's a disadvantage to be on the road. You know, we focus on the execution, blocking the front, running the correct route, making sure the ball's going where it should go, on defense, getting lined properly. Those are the things that we control and we coach. You know, whether the game's home or away, I mean, that's been decided by the MAC office months ago. You know, but again, yes, we're glad to be at home, but it, it isn't something we talk a lot about as a program. It's really a week-to-week -week focus.